the right. replacement players. Miami High Life opened its ninth summer season today, but not under the best of circumstances. The dispute between the High Life Fronton owners and the newly formed Players Association continues, with a majority of players still on strike. Hey, hey. Striking highlight players once again man the picket lines, trying to discourage customers from watching their replacements. The main issue remains recognition of the players' union, and that matter is being decided in the courts. In the meantime, the industry is suffering. Figures from the Florida Department of Business Regulation show world highlights average attendance and handle down substantially. At Miami, both are down about one third on the average, but the fronton will continue to operate. We have definitely reduced player cost, and that's one of the major expenditures of any highlight fronton is player cost. So uh, the, the reduction in expenses has definitely has helped offset the decrease in attendance and handle. Of the original 50 players on Miami's roster, 19 are not honoring the strike. Eight pros from other frontons have been brought in, and nine so-called replacement players have been hired, like Ken Paraglia, who also doubles as a public address announcer. My feelings about playing is I'm doing my job. I work for uh, World High Lie. I'm an employee, and uh, I'm doing my job. I have a family to take care of, and... Uh, I do what I do. Aside from legal recourses, what the players are seeking most right now is the support of the fans. As people walk into the fronton, they are handed these leaflets which say in part that you have a right to enjoy highlight games not played by inexperienced people. And before you wager your hard-earned money, think if you can trust management that hires parking lot attendants and ball boys to play. Yet many of the striking players, especially the Americans, came up the very same way. And the truth is some fans could care less if robots were out there as long as they win money. And the way they're playing right now, the only thing you can do is come and play numbers. You can't play the, the favorites or anything like that. It sours me as far as seeing that the way management has not cared about the way the sport has deteriorated. The quality of the pros and everything has just gone down so bad. That's sour at me, you know, that's why personally I don't think I'll ever go back. I know I'll never go back under their conditions. The strike would seem to be exacting its toll on both sides at this point, and most fans would wonder why ownership just doesn't deal with the players and end the stalemate. We want it to go through the courts and get the jurisdictional issue resolved. That's the first thing that we, we are entitled to due process. Once that is settled, then other, other issues can be addressed. Well, I hope they settle it soon. We are not yet finished with the 19... Uh, pay sport, mm -hmm. but uh, more than sports competition going on. Well, certainly they've had some trouble the last uh, three, four months. You know, they've been on strike. The players have. They want their union recognized by the establishment. Still, nothing has been settled. Now, imagine if some teams didn't join last year's NFL strike, played, and then crushed the replacement squads. Well, there's a similar situation right now on Highlight where replacement players are taking on non-striking regulars. Don Mariuto reports. The ongoing strike is taking its toll at Miami High Live for both the players on the picket line and management, which has seen average attendance plummet to under 2,000 to performance. But the strike has been a big opportunity for some, namely the replacement players and the fans who have made some intelligent bets. In the later games, I think you can, you can really make make money right now. Marty Klinkenberg is the High Lie handicapper for the Miami News. At least a couple games a night, I, there are teams that, that definitely have to be in the money unless, like, the lights go out in the middle of the game or something, or the, like that, or lightning strikes. It's a case of regulars not on strike having a big edge over less experienced replacements. Fernando Orbea, number 37, is a veteran who did not honor the walkout. Well, a lot of times when you see your opponents, you go, wow, these guys, they're still young, they haven't been playing as long as we have, you know, let's try to keep the ball in the back. But, a lot of times, you know, in highlights, a weird sport where you can be dominating the point and at the end of the point lose it. Since the strike began, Orbea's win percentage has increased by 25%. On the other side of the coin is Mario Mercado, number 40, one of the replacements who was a part-time announcer for Miami Highlight before the strike. He has won just once in 20 games. They have the experience. They've been playing for like 20 years, some 15, some 16 years, and I've been playing like only six or seven years. They'll always have the great advantage over me, only because of the experience. If the strike continues, High Lie officials are counting on players like Mario to steadily improve. So eventually there will be no difference in talent on the court or any edge in handicapping off it. Don Mariuto, News 4. I'm not so sure that will happen because it's going to take a long time for those inexperienced players to catch up. But nonetheless, the strike continues. And as Marty Klinkenberg said, the later games really seems to where the payoffs start coming in. Funny how that happens, isn't it? Oh, it sure is. Thanks, Tony. When we come back...
Well, you can bet on a highlight game, but uh, not many people want to bet on the outcome of the uh, stirrings behind the scenes there right now. What's the old Paul Newman movie? What we have here is a failure, failure to, to communicate. That's right. Highlight players want to unionize. Management says forget it. The result? A strike, now in its fifth week. And even though both sides are suffering, there is no negotiating, only lawsuits and boisterous protests. Today, Miami's summer highlight season opened, and as Doug Bond reports, the show is going on. Miami Highlight opened its summer season today with a noontime matinee. But the striking players were walking the picket line and trying to encourage fans and replacement players to stay away. Stop! Ramon! Ramon! Ferro! Yeah! Raven! Yeah! We want the fans to support the real players, and that's us. We're out here. We're, we're highlight players, not what's inside. Those are compensated amateurs. Miami is one of the few frontons in the country able to remain open, even though attendance has been down about 20% during the strike. Despite the strike, Miami High Lie has been able to fill its roster with mostly professional players. Of the 36 men in action today, 27 are professionals not honoring the strike. The remaining nine are amateurs. Management is willing to replace the amateur players with professionals if they will cross the picket line and return to work. If they're willing to come back, we want them to play, and we want to get them back on the court and get this game going again. Caught in the middle are the fans, who find themselves wagering on unfamiliar players and divided on the question of who is right, players or management. I think the management's right, because these players make enough money. I don't think I'm going to come back unless the players come back. The police are maintaining a strong presence at the front on. So far, there has been no violence on the picket line here, though the battle lines have been drawn. Well, time is on their side, but we feel that the fans are on our side. They're seeing the quality of the play is so bad, and I think they're starting to realize that management doesn't care about the fans either. For the moment, no one is winning. The striking players aren't being paid, the owners have seen profits plummet, and many fans appear to be disenchanted. Doug Vaughn, News Center 7 Sports. Okay, Doug. You know...